Okay guys, so in this video I'm going to show you another addition to our little cron application here. So let's get into it. So I had this idea. I thought, well, it wouldn't it be fun if we could just kind of figure out what tools the different job ads are mentioning. I mean, we don't necessarily need to know it. I mean, it's very hard to figure out what is popular and what's like being asked for by the different, uh, well, the, the different companies out there on the internet. So I thought, let's make a dashboard. Let's, uh, let's get some data from one of the job posting sites and just grab the references to different tools, put that in a graph so we can kind of compare like how many mentions the different job postings have to each of these tools. And I mean, this is just, I mean, this is not included like a perfect solution or anything like that, but it will give you, give us a rough idea of how much a certain tool name is referenced from, you know, from the different posts. So the way that we kind of, I thought about this is that, all right, so the original cron application was just the, it was just running in as a just as a VM in the cloud, well, in Google Cloud, basically. So it was just a Google Cloud application, right? But it was running on the App Engine. I don't want to run it on the App Engine because that that becomes a bit of a hassle if we want to wire things up with metrics and all that stuff. So I thought, all right, I will use a setup that is very similar to the setup that I use at work for grabbing metrics and stuff of this nature, and that is basically going to be the standard metrics gathering setup for most well it depends on what you're using of course but uh, for the most part I use Grafana and Prometheus for this and I thought I might as well do that as well here so I ported over my little application here to Kubernetes instead because it's a lot easier to run this through Kubernetes than if I wanted to set that up on the app engine so here is basically our two endpoints that I've added so you can see here we still have these other endpoints that I've had since in the past for checking Outlook and stuff like that. And now we have this jobs endpoint where we will specify a region and we will specify a t title of the whatever title we are going to look at. And then we have this little Indeed service here that is going to go to Indeed. Like it's just an arbitrary, that was one of the first job posting sites that I, f I found when I was searching. And basically we're going to give that service the region and the title that we want to search for. And then it's the service is going to go to that web page, um, input, like a search, and grab the job posting, like the job descriptions from, I think it's the first 50 or something like that, posts, and just match the descriptions against different keywords. So let's just walk through this. Uh, oh yeah, before I forget, the metrics endpoint here, this is a Prometheus specific thing, basically this is, so but what Prometheus is, is a time series database, so basically what it is intended to do is to help you gather metrics, and the default way of doing that is to have a endpoint, which is called metrics, and then Prometheus will, at a given time interval, basically just make a call to this endpoint and grab this, uh, like grab the information that we have gathered as part of this job and just store that in 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 itself. I, I will, we will very quickly touch on that later. But let's start off by having a look at our get job postings here. So here are our services. We can see here that we have two new services, which is going to be the Indeed service and the job statistics service because we want to make a separation between them. So the Indeed service represents our integration. That's the, ser that's the actual service that is responsible for grabbing the data, while the job statistic uh, service is responsible for actually grabbing useful statistics from whatever data we're getting from from this service. So it's just a separation of concerns. Basically one is responsible for getting data and one is responsible for making something useful of the data that is being gathered. So I still use Puppeteer because I, we could have done this with something like, yeah, like just making a network call, grabbing the HTML and use some traversals to which would have been fine. But uh, since we're already using Puppeteer, we might as well keep on using it. It's not necessary for this because now we're basically just scraping. So we're basically just grabbing uh, the HTML. That's all we're going to do. 
So we're going to spire up Puppeteer, we're going to grab a new page, and then we are going to go to the URL, and for getting the URL we need to do a specific thing, because the thing about the, the specific, Indeed in particular, is that they have different domains for the different regions. So if uh, that is the case, basically we have our regions configured in, in, our, con in our config, we have a regions uh, object that just is a key, it's just an object that holds the key value stores of, uh, it's just a key value object where the region specified has a host and the host is just a domain so it's gonna be .com for America, .co.uk for the for the UK and .sc for Sweden, you know, etc, etc, etc. But the actual paths are always are the same. So that's about it really. So this is how we build our, well, the URL that we are going to visit. So we grab the region, grab the host of the region that is specified, and then we add the title to the query. And then basically we just grab the limit here and then sort by the date. And when that happens, we are going to open up a web page on the web, the Indeed web page. And then we simply do a little bit of logging here. I've added Bungeon as a dependency here because, uh, well, it outputs things a little bit nicer than just using console logs as well. And then we're gonna go and get the results. And basically the thing that happens here is that first and foremost, we're gonna grab the job links on the page. And the way that we do that is that we just grab this selector here. We wait for the selector, which is, well, until this is shown basically. And then we grab every single of the, a single one of them and then we loop through them all because these are you know these are promises that are being re returned and then we simply extract the link and we grab or the property link the href link, uh, property and then we grab the json value so we get the actual url and then we add them to the array and return those so we have a url here of all the links and then we loop through them and basically all we're going to do is that we're going to go to each link and then we are going to get the description text which is going to be this thing here there's an element that holds this class the selector here is going to hit the element that holds the job description we're going to grab these the element and then we're going to extract the text content and then we're going to grab the json value or the string of the text content convert that to just text and that is this is going to be the job description and let's see here yeah over here and then we're going to go to our job statistics service and get the keywords from the description text and then we are going to just log out what keywords we found concatenate them together into our keywords array here because you remember we're looping several like we're getting the we're basically hitting 50 about 50 uh, different urls grabbing all of the descriptions of those and then we are just concatenating together all the instances of keywords we found on those pages. And that's about it really. Yeah, and then we have our results. We close the browser and then we create a, we create a stats object, which is basically, we're, we're going to look at that in just a moment. But basically what it is, it's just that it's this keywords array here. It, this is just going to contain, like, uh, this is just a long array with all the keywords that we've found. And then we're simply going to loop through and add them together to some type of key values uh, object that holds the amount, the, the number of keyword instances we found of that word. And then we are going to store this to our storage system and turn the key with the stats. And that's our entire, well, yeah, that's basically it. I see here we have a bug, or a very subtle one, where we return an empty array. This shouldn't be, this shouldn't be, we should do that instead because keyword stats is actually an object. So we should, oh, well, that's fixed now. Anywho, we don't really care because we don't, I don't think we actually use this for anything. I'm pretty sure we did it. No, exactly, we don't actually use the value, but it's good to be consistent. So let's look at our job statistics service. So here we are depending on Prom Client, which is a Prometheus library, or Prometheus, Prometheus Client library, and then we basically set tool references, 
as the name of our little gauge here. And a gauge is just, a, it's a Prometheus thing where we simply set a value, we can set it to a value, we can increment that. Um, it's a counter that you can set, you can decrement and you can increment. So because basically we are just running this job and then we want at every time step just to know what was the number at that moment. We don't care about incrementing or decrementing a number, we just want to know what was, it's like a snapshot. What, how The 51st job postings we found, what were the references we found at that point and then at the next point and so forth and so forth and so forth. And the labels we are going to store are the region, title and the tool, like the actual name. So let's see here, yeah, get uh, store tool references. So here as we can see, we're passing the region, the title and the stats that we've collected. And then basically all we're doing here is that we are going to create this little labels object here where we loop through all of the stats and we grab the name and then we simply create a, well, this little label object here, which is the thing, this is specific to this library. And then we set the, set these labels that's like to, to the value of the stats that we found. So basically if we say we found a 10 references to Java in, uh, in our little job here when we scraped the job postings, we're simply going to say that, all right, so region, the job title, and then the name is going to be, well, Java in this case, and we how many references we found to Java. And that's all there is to it. Get keywords, so uh, this is where we pass in the description text and all it's gonna do is that it's going to, we have a, we're gonna, we're gonna look at that in just a moment, but we have a bunch of keywords that we are interested in looking at or like keyword objects that contain a label, like a name and a regex. And then we simply test the description text and see if we can find an instance of this regex. Easy piece. We can make something much more elaborate, but for since all we really, like we are just trying to do some simple matching here to see if there is like references to different words and that's all we care about. If we want to do something more elaborate we could but it's not necessary for this little toy project. And then we set, we basically just return an array of all, or we return the name of the keyword. So we have those labels that we're going to use in our metrics. And creating the stats object is basically this. So all it's going to take is the keywords array and then it's going to reduce that down to an object that simply holds references. Like it's just an object that has the keyword and the amount of times it found that keyword. And that's our entire statistics service. So there's nothing much more, like it's not nothing more really going on here. So we can have a look. I will just quickly touch on kubernetes and stuff like maybe this is too much because there's so much of that we might want to do that later actually the going through all these configuration files might not be the best thing right now so let's skip that actually but what we can do is we can go and have a look at what the output of this is so let's get our pods and here we have our pods we can see that they're running cubes and then we are going to port forward into our grafana pod and we're going to bind that to 3002. And there we are. Let's see here, localhost 3002. And here is our Grafana setup. So basically what we, this is Grafana and it's an open source thing. You can go and look at it. it it's a very nice uh, if, uh, dashboard system. Like it helps a lot when you want to do like in-house metrics and stuff like this. It's not maybe the best thing for like, yeah. I mean, you shouldn't substitute this with like Google Analytics or stuff of this nature. This is more if you're interested in doing your, if you want to track your own metrics internally in your company, this, I found this to be a very useful tool. And we use it at my job and I've used it in like, I think I've used it for, I think, well, I, I have used this more than I haven't. So I, I kind of, I like it. Anywho, I made this little dashboard here and here we can see that today so far, here we have our references. We've run Prometheus if you, and, and our job on a schedule. And basically what, what is happening is that through Kubernetes, we are running a cron job that is going to curl that jobs endpoint with the different, well, the different information. We can actually look at that specific part just very quickly because I think that's easy enough. 
let's see your job stats so here we have our little jobs and basically what's going to happen here is we're going to uh, every hour we're simply going to start up a container well in this case uh, we're going to start up a pod with four containers which is going to be the alpine container which is just a very minimalistic linux distribution like it's like four or five megabytes and then we're going to do a wget like you just do an, a network call with the different well the different regions that we are interested in so i'm grabbing information for sweden america or north america india and the uk and then we have the title that we want to search for and then as we could see earlier the job is simply going to run grab all of the job the 51st job descriptions it finds and then scrape out all of the information so the way that it works is basically this thing here so we're going to pattern match against all of these different keywords. Now this is the tricky part because regex is like regexes are always tricky to get perfect. So don't go. I mean, if you're looking at this now and you think that oh this is the truth, the true state of the world, though I, I'm just going to warn you, this is not necessarily like. Uh, don't read too much into this, guys. This is just for fun. It it is useful and it has relevancy, but there are more. Uh, there's more accurate data to get if you wanted to be like really really have real insights into how the job market looks but it's good enough for a simple case so basically we create this little keywords object here which holds a regex and basically we if there is no regex specified if i'm not overriding it with my own regex it's just going to default to creating a new regex from the name which is going to be case insensitive and it's going to use a word break on each side just to make sure that it is a single word because hey we don't want if you know if I'm searching for, if I'm regex, ma regex matching against the word Java, that's going to hit Java and JavaScript. But I you just want to hit Java if I'm going to put things into the Java bucket. So it's important to put these things here. And here I am storing my SPR. These are the SPA frameworks I'm looking for. Some databases with some, yeah, uh, just arbitrary databases that I know of. And here's a list of different languages, and yeah, that's about it. So we're simply going to concatenate together all of this, and well, as you saw earlier, regex tests the descriptions, and we're left with these numbers. And here you can see. So today so far we can see that we've found like globally, this is just globally now, but you can see that we have some databases, and SPA frameworks, how popular are these, or are how many references we can find after running this and as you can see the pattern here is fairly consistent so every hour we run this job and we get some new data so you can see that the the curves of this graph kind of is this little sawtooth pattern here well and then we can of course break things down into region so let's say that we want to check you know, America or North America here we see the job metrics for North America uh, we can see that it differs a little bit from the global. And then we have the UK. Let's have a look there. You can see here how it looks. The thing that is interesting here is that things are, I mean, it differs a little bit here and there, but sometimes, I mean, the top languages are usually C sharp, Java, and JavaScript, which is kind of, well, I think that's fairly expected but uh, for the most part it can differ quite a bit in the lower like here uh, a little bit down uh, into in the languages and yeah well we can there's nothing much more to it I, we can have a small look here at you know setting up these metrics here we can see that i've just basically put up these different prometheus queries so that i can query the my prometheus database with the well i've set regions so the, these are just variables Oh, sorry. These are just variables, the title and the region, so that I can actually flip them, like um, to switch and change them to what I want them to be. And then the tool is, of course, hard coded because I want to search for the actual tool. And yeah, that this is pretty much well. That's that's pretty much this the entire project. So this is just one example of fun things you can do with cron jobs and with a little bit of know-how with Kubernetes and stuff like that, and some infrastructure knowledge, you can set up something that's quite useful. And perhaps in the future I will revisit this little 
application set up here and make uh, maybe make a few videos about you know consistently just basically maybe we can have a look once a week or once a month and see how things are going and reflect a little bit on why things look the way that they look so hopefully you found this interesting have a great day